Today, we are looking at an Asus 2-in-1 tablet that has trace damage on the charging port. This one is definitely not a pretty sight. Let me show you what we're looking at underneath the scope. Believe it or not, this was the area where we had a charging port. We have ground leg, ground leg, ground leg, ground leg. And then this area here in the center was a ground pad as well. The structural integrity of the port isn't going to be what it was purely because of the fact that we don't have this ground pad. And I believe this pad here is also ground because it's connected to this pad here. Let's zoom in a bit, shall we? There we go, that's better. And I believe this pad here is also ground and we just have the three in the center. I could be wrong, maybe this one isn't ground. Maybe it links to this pad here. And again, I don't know if this is ground or not. I'll check in a second. You could say that the ground leg is here. That's why this could be ground. But for some reason, this pad doesn't look like it's attached to this big trace here. So it should be a, I don't want to use the word pretty straightforward trace repair because it, you know, it's, <laughs> it's rarely a straightforward trace repair, but it looks like all we need to do is take a wire and put it from here to here for that trace. We take another wire and go from here to here for this one. And then finally one from here to here. I could put a wire on the actual traces along here as well, but it just wouldn't be that strong. Hence why I want to go from the actual points that we have on the board. I'm using coated enameled wire. So for example, if I solder the wire here, the coating of the wire will protect it from touching this point here. I'm actually just going to go ahead and probably wiggle these out of the way, I think. Start by doing that. Get rid of these traces. There we go. Just to make life a little bit easier. And also this one here. We have contacted the customer and they are happy to go ahead with the job. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. So this is what we're looking like. First things first, we need to actually clear out the ground hole. So I'm going to do that now. I did keep the uh, the previous port so you could see that it just took up all of the traces you can see there. This one in the middle is the ground one that I was talking about which the uh, the new port isn't going to have. But it should be fine as long as we have the legs that go in the ground holes. We actually have new ports but you could probably get away with just reusing this one I guess if you wanted to. Right so how are we going to tackle this? First of all we're going to just apply some flux to the area where the ground pads are and we're just going to uh, get some leaded solder and fill up the holes and then wick them away and that should clear our holes out. It's actually a very, very thin PCB. So as you can see, it's melting everywhere else. I probably don't need to apply leaded solder here and could have got away without doing it, but better be safe than sorry, I guess. That should clear out the holes fairly easily with our solder wick. There we go. Quick clean with some IPA. There we go. Now we have a clean base to work with. Now what we're going to do is just take our port that we bought and just make sure that it fits. If we can, uh, if we can grab it, that is. Come on. Uh, I think it's fine. Yeah, no, it is. It's okay. Perfect. All right. So you can probably see from this angle that the port fits absolutely fine. Now, usually what I would do and the method that I would use to do the trace repair is I would add solder into the places I need to add the solder. Also sort the traces out and then drop the port into place. But what I'm going to do today, just to mix it up a little bit, is solder the port in as it is and then solder the jumper wires to those pins because the pins are exposed. If I was, for example, working on a Nintendo Switch and a USB-C port where the row of pins were hidden underneath, I wouldn't have that option. But because this is micro USB, I have the option to solder the wire to the pins after I've soldered the port. So in saying that, here we have the back of the port, which is going to add a tiny bit of flux to each of the legs. And this will make our port nice and secure. It's already pushed in pretty well. So we just hold the solder here, just like this. Oh, didn't want to take to the pad, that's for sure. Let's try that again, shall we? Maybe that's a bit better. And this one, perfect. Something very satisfying about this. And finally, this one. 
there we go just a quick clean on the back just to make sure all good all right that's fine if we turn it over has the solder flow through yes it has it's sold it's gone through nicely maybe on maybe needs a little bit of a touch up on those on the right back leg there and maybe even just on this side to make it that little bit more secure so again i'll just do that now quickly looks like we've got a little bit of flux on the port we'll just clean that off nice and now just take a little bit of flux dab it here and just put a smidge there might as well do that back bit there as well put a bit of solder on our iron we're just going to come in here again just to make it very secure there we go and just there and just there and again, a bit of isopropyl alcohol, tidy as we go, just makes it easier. So this port isn't going anywhere, which is really, really good news. And now we just need to sort out the trace repair. In which case, I know it sounds silly, but because we're going from these little test points here, let's just go ahead and add some leaded solder to these little pads. I don't, I know this one doesn't actually need the, the leaded, but it felt left out. Let's actually tin this bit up here. Might be able to just even touch that to the pin. Yeah, which we can. Just needs a bit of flux. Okay, so that one's fine. It's touching the pin now. I've already tinned the wire, so it should be a straightforward touch just there there we go that's attached to that and then what we want to do is attach it to this pad right here and because it's enameled it's not going to interfere with the one next to it as you can see so if i just go ahead and hold this down here you'll see in a second there we go and if we just snap off this bit of wire perfect and then so on and so forth. Quite a big tip on this iron, to be honest. Maybe I should go a little bit smaller here. So I need to get a bit more precise. So we use this one here. What I'll also do is come in with a pair of tweezers as well. There we go, so that's now attached. And we wanna put it to this pad here. There we go. And again, just break that off. Like so. And the last one we have just goes from here to this pad here. This one, again, is ground, so it doesn't need to connect to anything. And you can see that these, oh, that one is broken off. So we just come back in here and make sure that it's soldered to the pin. As it should be. There we go. That's a bit better. A stronger. And that one is good as well. So, so far, so good. And then we're just going to simply pop this one on this pin. Just like that. Is that good? Yep. That seems to be secure. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. My conclusion for this so far is that it's definitely easier to sort the trace wires out first and then solder the port on, just dropping it. There we go, that's better, that's a lot better. And then just take this one and drop it here. There we go, take our tweezers, rip it off. Now in fact, take our multimeter, which is in continuity mode, just to make sure that we have connections where they need to be. So this one needs to go here, perfect. This one needs to go here, and this one needs to go here. Perfect, just make sure that it's not a dodgy connection. No, that seems to be absolutely fine. And we don't have any bridges to the others. Just need to make sure of that as well. All good. Okay, and this one should be, so this pin here is actually touching ground already, which is good. And we have this one here, which is soldered. Just want to make sure it's on that path. Yeah, 
that's fine okay good just taking a look a little bit closer to ensure that they're all connected they all look fine maybe that first one on the right could do with a little bit more solder just to make it that little bit more secure because what we want to ensure is that this repair lasts the customer for a while and not just five minutes if we come in with a little bit of solder on the end of our iron let's be careful here not to knock anything else just want to get rid of the flux so i can see what i'm doing there we go there we go wow yeah 10 times better okay uh, i don't really want to touch the others because the others look fine but i'm going to and now if i go ahead and move that yes yeah, that's a lot better okay So now what we do is I'm going to heat the area up with a little bit of hot air and I'm going to clean it with a brush because we have a lot of flux in the area. I'm going to put the temperature down to about 200 because we have a plastic port here and that'll be more than enough to melt the flux. Just to give it a nice clean, you see. There we go. Bit of isopropyl alcohol. And then just stroke down. Not against or not to the side to make sure that we don't lose any of those wires thing is if we do lose any of those wires they weren't strong enough in the first place so it's always a good test to give everything a clean just a little bit more ipa and dab with a cotton bud not wipe or anything like that just a quick dab all right that looks good make sure that that's not touching that pad here which it's not but it is going to here make sure this pad isn't touching here which it's not but it's going to here and this pad is nowhere near anything else and just to confirm it's going to there And now because this area is clean, we're just going to add some conformal coating. Conformal coating doesn't necessarily make anything stronger, but what it does ensure is that things don't bridge together and make a connection to short something else out. So we're just going to add this around this area here, just a bit further down, just to make sure. There we go. Nice. Could go just a little bit further up, just to make sure. Now we cure it. All right, we've just cured it. And as you can see, absolutely solid. And again, looking down into the port, everything looks to be soldered as it should. And here we have the back of the port. There's nothing further than to give this a little test. I plug the charging cable into the tablet. And as you can see on the screen, we have a battery symbol. As you know, there is more than one way to do things, especially when it comes to soldering. I just wanted to show a method from a different perspective and I hope you enjoyed it. That's gonna be another happy customer and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.